Enough! I said enough! Another word and you'll all be here till five o'clock. Nothing to me, is it? I've got all the time in the world. I didn't even get to the end of the corridor before there's such a din that all the other teachers started opening their doors as much to say, what the hell's going on? Somebody's talking now. Who was it? Was it you, Mr. Man? I didn't accuse you. I asked you. Someone in the back row. You're the losers, not me. Right, who was that? Hands on heads. That includes you. Put the comb away. You're going to have one minute's perfect silence before you go. Even if we have to wait till midnight. I'm going to the staff room now. You're all going to be as quiet as mice. Don't fish. Don't hear a sound. Not a bubble. No, not in here. Must be working. Miracles never cease. Not here. Must be working in the attic. All gone to bed. At ten o'clock, darling. Perhaps he's hiding. the room so much, what you've done with it. it cost absolutely nothing. It's terribly PLU, isn't it, darling? Mm. How's that? PLU? People like us? That dresser, for instance. Twelve and six? No! In a country sale. Oh, I'm green, aren't you, darling? Yes, but how many layers of paint did you take off? Three. Cream, brown and green. Lord, the plebs in their lavatory colours! Freddie? You don't think I bullied you? What? It's coming back here. No, why? Oh, I've been crying, going on like that. I've been going hot and cold ever since. Don't tell Brian, will you? What? How I cried. Not if you say so. How do you like your coffee? Half and half. It's nothing Can? to be. Yeah, half and half. It's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, it must be years since I got the old waterworks going. She thinks so too. Give me the creep, the man in tears. End of all capacity. Is it all right tonight? All right. All right. A bit better than all right, my dear. No, truly. It's an electrical performance. It is a lovely part. And you drew on Deep Well's compassion. You are sweet. Well's compassion. You are sweet. Done by Brian. What was good about bullying you? What? Almost fell about when she said that. I'm afraid I'm not with you. Bully you? You're so damn keen to get in here, you fell out the car. I fell from the car because I caught my ankle in the belt, okay? <laughs> okay Piss yourself. Don't be coarse. And that job on the motorcycle almost went over me. Look, I thought you wanted to help these people. Not me. Give me a match, will you? You've been smoking like a furnace all night. And all day. I always smoke when I'm bored. We'll go home. Car's outside. I'm bored there too. All day. Entertain yourself in some. Sheila, for instance. Well, we've done wonders with Sheila and we can't stop now. You, not me. Well, I'm not the sort of person to make sympathetic noises and a sweet F.A. But naturally, as soon as I heard she'd have been in a few performances, I leapt at the opportunity. You know, get her down, nice people, friendly atmosphere. Well, work like a dose of salt. So well, in fact, old Bride's been slightly catcher. Thinks I'm getting my way with Sheila. Hardly surprising. He's left holding the baby. Exactly. Literally. Which is why I'm here. A. To turn, there's nothing good. B. Getting to see us without the kitty. And well, C. Give Bride back an interest in life. He's gone ten now. What sort of things do you have in oh, mind? Oh, well, I'll probably get him down to see you in a few performances. You are joking. Well, no. 
You told me he can't stand acting. Oh, part of his chosen image, darling. If he loves the woman, and he says he does, he'll come. She's not even any good in well, it. Will you shut up? Well, is she? You'll see in an instant that you're giving her charity, and he's hardly the I think man. I know him a tad better than you, darling. We did go to school together, for instance. Same school at the same time? I'd hardly call that together. There's some truth in that. He was always in the backwards classes, farting around. Freddy! So... And there's no need for it. He's a perfectly intelligent young lad. You've only got to look at him now, though. Halfway through life, not much of a past nor a future. Coping an ass end of a comprehensive school, and, well, I'm driving a bloody popular. Ginger Cat didn't come in here. Haven't seen it. What the hell, thing? No thanks. Sir, it's not that my position's anything to boast about. I just took over where Dad left off. Not quite, darling. You've worked wonders. That's only because I'm dead keen. It's so galling to me as a socialist, you know, the waste of a bribe. As a matter of fact, I'd seen nothing of him since six months past. I leant over in the tray and said, Dumb Spyro Spear! Didn't mean anything to you? I must say, it doesn't to me. Our school motto. A while I live, I hope. It's a bit squaresville, darling. Well, I'm afraid I'm a bit squaresville. Besides, we had a good old belly, I can, can get away. I'm talking about this poor little kiddie in the world. I just want to get Sheila back in the swim of things. Sheila? Well, yes. Not the weirdy. The what? You know. Darling, don't call it a weirdy. Well, she is, though, isn't she? You try and imagine it was one of our own. Darling, how could you? They're absolutely gorgeous. <sighs> I don't want to sound orphantatious or fascist at all. But in my opinion, there's only one useful approach to life, and that's a positive one. For instance, there's no use saying, living day in and day out like a hopes crib. The same with a troubled teenager. You don't say, naughty boy, go stand that corner. You say, grab those nails and hammer. And then, you're in business. <laughs> oh, bruh. I said hi, and we got onto the conversation about fertility counts, and boosters, and on to jump. So I said I killed her. Didn't go down very well. So I changed the subject again to one thing that all rich people hate, fleas. And Freddie started talking about something that was actually interesting. Hitler! Now I don't agree with the chap, but I myself have two rules I live by. Love thine enemy, and thou shalt not kill. Did you know, Brian, the whole Jewish problem happened in a hospital only a few steps away from Auschwitz? That certainly gives legalised killing a bad name, but what about the other forms? The bombing certainly gets decorated, but anyone who lets Joe dies gets ten years. Uh, completely different stories. So I've noticed. Now, Brian, you don't agree with killing, do you? Well, no. But if a madman would come into your house and wreck your wife, what would you do? Well, kill him. Exactly. Sometimes killing is unavoidable. Thou shalt not kill unless absolutely necessary. Uh, yes. Whose side is he on? Darling, it's 20 to 11. Christ's sake, you're like a blasted cuckoo clock on the third stroke. Peep, peep, peep. Charming. It wasn't my idea coming back here. But once Freddy set his eyes on a lame dog, he might as well talk to the moon. Looking at that door, thinking she's going to come through at any moment, that poor weirdy. I know it's awful, but it's one of my, you know, things. We're none of us perfect. But I can't stand anything NPA, non physically attractive. Old women in bathing suits, and skin diseases, cripples, rotten house men who spit and have hair growing out of their ears. No good. I just can't look at them. And I know Freddie's right about Hitler, and of course that's horrid, but I can't help sympathising with Bri. Can you? I don't mean how they described. I think it should be done by the state, and so should charity. Then we might have an end to all of those hideous dolls in shop doorways with irons on their legs. Freddie won't hear of it, of course. But then, he loves a lame dog. Every year he buys so many tickets for the spastic raffle. And every year he wins the TV set. But every year he gives it some poor old folks home. 
He tried taking me along on one of his visits, but I told him it wasn't me, and he gave up. One place we went, there were poor freaks with enormous heads and so on. And you just think, oh, put them out of their misery. They wouldn't have survived in nature. It's only modern medicine, so modern medicine should be allowed to do away with them. A team of doctors and do-gooders naturally, to make sure there's no funny business. And then, if I say gas chamber, makes it sound horrid, but I do mean put to sleep. <laughs> when Freddie gets all mealy mouthed about it, so I say, look darling, if one of our daughters was critically ill and you knew there was a cure but it had been discovered in the Nazi laboratories, would you refuse to let them use it? I certainly wouldn't. I love my own immediate family and that's a lot. Can't imagine any more. They may not be the most hard-working, well-behaved geniuses on earth, but no one in their right mind could say they were NPA. Freddie, I'm going. He gets a taxi. Oh, the cows have stopped. Yes, they've stopped. Oh, this is Josephine. This is Jo. Say hello to Uncle Freddie. Hello, Jo. What do you know? Not much, I'm afraid. And Auntie Pamela. She's got a rather pretty face, hasn't she? She is rather P.O.U. once you get to know her, aren't you, sweetie? I'm lovely, she says. But strangely passive tonight. She did do it for her medicine, did you? He'd be strangely passive if you have been crying and fidgeting and doing dudes. But her eyes, they're hardly open. Who wants to open her eyes in the middle of the night? One hour before me, the next work too after, she says. Oh, darling, you miss the councils. What a shame. Christmas already, she says. Seems to come around quite a bit. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the bright sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asked me in the Oh, what is it? Oh, down here. Well, nothing we can do. One day when you're doing that, the wind will change and you will stay like it. Do you think she needs a doctor? She should be in bed. I'll take her up. No, what use is that? She's unconscious. What use is she doing down here? That's the weight. I'll say we're Muslims. Oh, do give me a shilling for Joe. I love the old customer, she says. Oh, here, Brian. From Joe. We must be leaving now. Dear, I had no idea she was so. Legion and it. She really is. So helpless. She is worse than usual. Aren't you, Blossom? My mother. Oh, hello. How nice to see you. Cousin Hosiery, you'll be glad when Christmas is over. And what did she say to that? She said, I certainly shall. But apart from the rush, I said to Mrs. Parry, it did all look very nice. The decorations and the birds and the toilet sets. See Jesus? Pardon? Did you see Jesus? Well, if I did, I didn't notice. On top of the electricity bill. Oh, they'll bring religion into anything these days, won't they? <laughs> well, that's nice, isn't it? I think that's all the things. I'm fast asleep, she says. She's poorly, very poorly. Having 40 minutes, she says. It's all right, really. And now before midnight's worth two after. That's what they say. Let's see how it fits, shall we? Oh, wouldn't she be lovely if she was running about? Well, it's a beautiful child. Is yeah. it the first time you've seen her? Why, I brought her down. Do you think you have to be sure she will? Come on, it's like then. You must have for that, yes. yes. I fancy a half inch longer. Oh, would you bother? No, well, I've got to do what little we can, haven't we? Yes, exactly. <sighs> you should have seen the shops this afternoon. I said to the woman who's got tools and hosiery, you'll be glad when Christmas is over. And what did she say to that? She said, I True. It's not true. They're all vetted. We've got one. It stays in any position. Oh, right. Not the pans. The other. That was true, too. As soon as Joe sat on his lap, she had a fit. That stopped him. Do you know, I, I believe I've acquired a little visitor. That's not what you'd expect from the Odeon, is it? You've got it here off our cap. We're infested with them. Are you really, Sheila? Fleas is something I don't believe we've ever had. Can you remember, Brian? Occasional woodlouse. That's not the same as fleas. It is Beatrice Webb. We do keep her outside now. I should. <laughs> 
no very fond of animals, Sheila, but surely it's an interest you must try and keep in proportion. It is the first time we've had them. Well, I say that's the first time for everything, don't they? Oh, look, another fit. She's worse. She's sleeping it off. They'll have to find How the room. They're all vetted. We've got one. It stays in any position. Oh, right, not the pans. The other. That was true, too. As soon as Joe sat on his lap, she had a fit. That's not regional wouldn't it? That's not the same as fleas. It is bitch as well. We do keep her outside now. I should. I know I'm very fond of animals, Sheila, but surely it's an interest you must try and keep in proportion. It is the first time we've had them. Well, I say that's the first time for everything, don't they? Oh, look, another fit. She's worse. She's sleeping it off. They have to find How can you say that? What? Sleeping it off. I ought to have had it destroyed. Oh, another dose of medicine. If it was me. Sorry, Mum. I ought to have whatever you call it put to sleep. The cats. Oh. Fleas do bring disease, Brian. Well, my daughter's school had a plague of bugs brought in by some council house kiddies. Darling, how do we know it was them? It wasn't the kiddies' fault, Freddy. I blame the parents. Someone got the most hideous rash. Well, some children are more susceptible, more sensitive. Brian always had such delicate skin. Oh, my <laughs> 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 I could only find this one. Where's it all gone? Oh yeah, Joe. Um, she knocked it over, having a fit. I had to save her first. But it's like treacle. How did it get poured out? Well, it did. It's been washed clean? I saved enough for a dose and then I washed it clean. You must get some... Knocked it over, having a fit. I had to save her first. But it's like treacle. How did it get poured out? Well, it did. It's been washed clean? I saved enough for a dose and then I washed... Daddy been up to, eh? Do you think he's up to something? Well, that medicine is thick. You couldn't spill much. He told us he killed her. Now, she. He told you what? He killed her, yes. Oh, no. An adolescent's joke. His jokes, I never listen. Attention seeking. It is attention seeking. Showing off. Like a baby, by saying that he can take my attention. Oh, poor Joe. And get it on himself again. And when that pulled, he'd make himself as the corpse, or the killer, anything, so that he is the most important part. Well, I can't. Like a baby, by saying that he can take my attention. Oh, poor Joe. And get it on himself again. And when that pulled, he'd make himself as the corpse, or the killer, anything, so that he is the most important part. Well, I can't imagine Brian doing that without provocation. Oh, you see, we've had another joke this evening. <laughs> Apparently, Sheila and I are having a love affair. Which I can assure you, neither of us gave him slight bit of provocation. Well, perhaps not you. Do you know about it? Well, he told me. Oh! Lord. This is horrid. I'd love to have heard what you said when he told you. Darling, can you hear the car start? Well, I'll tell you. I didn't know. I said you must make up your own mind, Brian. But I'll... he had a shock when he did. I'll go and check. Meaning what exactly? Meaning you always made his mind up for him. Oh, this, is, this is nice. You spoiled him. I must say. Wrecked him. Thank you. Where's Freddy? The car hasn't started either. I'm going to check. Not started. The car won't start. I wonder you were just sitting down as I came out. Should I go in my car? Oh, would you? Love to. Should have gone in the first place. Anything to get away? Shall I come show shortcut? No need. You got the chitty? What? Prescription. It's yellow. Looks like custard. Only 25. Not started. The car won't start. I wonder you were just sitting me down as I came out. Should I go in my car? Oh, would you? Love to. Should have gone in the first place. Anything to get away? Shall I come show shortcut? No need. You got the chitty? What? Prescription. It's yellow. Looks like custard. Only 25 quid that car cost me. It's only after three years. Look at it. You were never very clever with your hands. You took after your father that way. He used to spend hours on him behind the radio ground, and in the end we'd have to call the proper man. Great. Spoiled baby, cuddle baby! Now, Sheila! The only way he knows how to get what he wants is by screaming and stamping his feet. But that's a bit grotesque at his age. So anyway, he first of all says, poor me, but nobody listens. So he goes and makes some jokes and everybody laughs. Makes more and more jokes and everybody laughs again. Then when everybody's gone, 
He comes out to me and says, poor me. I have to swallow that because you spoiled him. Sheila. Well, I kept the house free of fleas, I'll admit that. Spring clean once every year instead of once every five. Certainly when he was a tiny mite, I used to pin his ears back in, in fear that they'd protrude. Boiled a kettle in his room for croup, made a mustard bath in the cold and kept out the wind. I believe in an insulated house. It's still insulated, Brian. It's still home. You're welcome any time. You know that. Especially since I was left alone, not so much at home anymore, more than a blooming nunnery. Suck up there day, day in, like, day out like a blooming nun. There you are. Poor me. What did you say? Your self-pity, just like him. Wait till you're alone. Why don't you move in with your friend then? Mrs. Parry? Yes, and then you can sit there each in your perfectly insulated houses, each with your own TV, stove, lawnmower, and empty garage, each complaining continually about being a blooming nun. What's stopping you? Well, you want your privacy. Do you? I don't. I hate it. Would do a through rule alike? You see, what are we doing? Look at poor Joan Hill. I think she's seriously ill. Why are we talking about you two? Has the poor mite ever been anything but seriously ill? Oh, we must call a doctor. She's as white as chalk and her lips are blue. Straining to the heart, you see. I'll take her upstairs, let her sleep it up. No, her chest is hardly moving. I'll touch her flat room, she says. Leave her. She ought to be in hospital. I'll go if nobody else will. She ought to have gone in years ago. But don't let Brian touch her. Then the marriage would have had a chance. You can't expect a man to take second place to a child like that. Shush! It's not his fault she's spastic. What was that? Not his fault who's then? No, no one's. Not your fault either. When you're born into a family and it's congenital, it's not your fault, no. What's she talking about? Fitz I'm talking about. What? Your uncle's fit. Uncle's fit? Which uncle? What uncle was it again, Brian? You told her my uncle had fit! Oh, Mum. Well, you did. Your cousin Jeff. Infant convulsions? What baby doesn't have infant convulsions? None of the babies in our family for a start. Well, I take that for granted, dear. What made you mention cousin Jeff to her like that? Well, we've just been talking about the epilepsy in our family. I beg your pardon? And I felt I had to console her with someone from your side. Take your time to throw it back, don't you? Epilepsy in our family? Where'd you get that? From you, Uncle Neville. Uncle Neville? Oh, Uncle Neville. Yes, Uncle Neville. No, he wasn't family. He just happened to marry Auntie May. So we're only epileptic by marriage. Of course. I will say this for May, though. Mrs. Parry always said that if you know that there's a taint in the family, you should refrain from children. That walking sheep should welcome any excuse. Please don't use language to me. Right, you sit around like a mutt while she picks on your mother in company. Not you, Mum, Mrs. Parry. My best friend. You don't expect me to defend Mrs. Parry. Nurse, nurse, we've done it. I tell you, with this we can make whole continents barren. The deterrent that we've all been working for. Mrs. Parry. Ha 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 ha. I thought you were being serious for a moment then. <laughs> Come on, mother, I'll take you home. What, back to the nunnery? Yes, that's right. Thank you, that's gratitude. I thought you said you couldn't get the car to start. No, I crank it. You mean you didn't try that before? I had a tartan grip. You're leaving Joe alone with Freddie. Why, are you going somewhere? To find the doctor. I'll do that when I get back. No, do it now. She's unconscious. I'll only be 20 minutes. Half an hour if we're lucky. She'll make tea. I shan't stop for tea. I've got some Gary Baldies, I don't Oh, can I um, ring from there then? Of course, I've never said no to you. All right? No, do it now. I'll do it. Oh, would you, Freddie? Of course, while well, he's taking his mother home, I'll go down to the local phone box. You interfering bastard! Look, I'm just trying to help. Help, you're a pain in the arse! Oh, I hate to play with language. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got, three penny piece? I might have one in my bag. So what you're trying to say is there's no way out. There's no other possible way. You're being childish, Brian. You must have heard, thou shalt not kill! Except when it shall come to pass that thy trade routes become endangered, then thou shalt slay as many of the enemies of General Motors and ICI. Oh, look, we're being childish. I'll just dial an emergency. Yes, I'll show you the phone box. Say it's urgent. But to go, Tom, though, it's bitter. Going out of the warm on a night like this is the best way if you want to catch cold. Mrs. Barry and I came out of the old, you know, and it was cutting it down your industry like a knife. I said to Mrs. Parry, oh my lord, what a night. She said, they said we'd be expecting something of the sort running into about February. I said, it's a shame for the old people. She said, Grace, I hate to remind her, but we're the old people nowadays. 
I said, well, if I've got to stand around waiting for a bus this, I shall catch my death. I said, I might be old, but I'm not quite ready to go yet. So if you go to your running your home, Brian, put something on. It's not so much the cold as the contrast. Talking to myself. No, but it's an old car with drafts in all direction. He's always been susceptible to cold. Well, if it's in your nature, I say it's nothing to be ashamed of. Where's Joe? Pardon? Joe's gone. How could you have gone? Oh, didn't you see him go? No, he didn't say. Brian! Are you ready, Mum? What? Let's go, are you? Well, I'm getting ready. Well, put your coat on then. Well, why are you going to put one on? No time. I'll get the engine started. Oh, you get that started first. Do you know what the engine's like? No sign of them. He's not up there. He was just here. With Joe? No. Where's he gone now? Up there. The garden? Mind the cat, Sheila. Are you ready, Mum? What? No, the rush. Have you got the car started? Can we get inside first? I'll push it for one car. Well, mind you, don't strain yourself. <laughs> I need to talk to you about the cardigan. Oh, not now. Why are you going to wait for your friends oh. to come back? No sign of him and his stomach now. Well, I don't know where he's gone now. I think it's all over. It's all over, bro. Look at her. What did you do? Turn the back seat of the car. Why? I don't know. Maybe stop you guys from saving her. You shouldn't have done that, not however bad she was. Has anybody got a looking glass? Well, there might be one in my bag, quickly. I think it's all over. It's all over, bro. Look at her. What did you do? Turn the back seat of the car. Why? I don't know. Maybe stop you guys from saving her. Oh, Brian, you shouldn't have done that. Not however bad she was. Has anybody got a looking glass? Well, there might be one in my bag, quickly. Oh, here's one. Put it close to her mouth. Come on, sweetheart. Try for mummy. Don't worry, Sheila. Maybe the glass isn't cold enough to get the condensation. Thank mm -hmm. you.